question. I grew up in New York, and as you know now, Deb, New York's a great place to grow up, and one of the main things about New York is that it's filled with people, and nature isn't very much in evidence. In fact, you can hardly sometimes see the sky, so I was always very curious about people in particular, why so many really nice people ended up being so unhappy, and also more philosophical issues like what does it mean to see or hear or know or feel? I remember when I was a baby, uh, in my crib really, I was lying in bed. I was sick and I looked at the opposite wall and I relaxed my eyes and the wall seemed to go forward and backward as I changed my accommodation, which you know, shocked and scared me because I realized that we construct the world. When I got to Dartmouth, I took Psychology 1 as part of a general prerequisite and uh, in the course of studying about animal learning and human learning, I was really entranced by how we learn sequences of events and time. It brought up all sorts of really exciting philosophical questions, and as I might have mentioned, that I was really interested in philosophy, as so many young people are. I would always start by trying to analyze structured data, so parametric data, data that you know you can draw graphs, mm -hmm. this versus mm -hmm. that, and of course that was part of what was thrilling about the exercise because you start with piles of static data and then it's a leap of imagination to try to imagine it as the effect of a moment by moment ongoing self-organizing process in an individual mind when you didn't yet have the model. Looking at the data, it, seem to be filled with philosophical paradoxes. So for example, if you're learning a list of things, why is it often easier to remember the beginning and end, but not the middle? I like saying, you know, it's like you have a relationship. You remember how it ended and how it began, and then everything in between can be a bit of a blur. And this right. is called the boat serial position effect. And, and there were data that indicated that if you waited a little while after practicing a list that could dramatically influence how you learn the items that came before in the list, which show that in some sense the non-occurrence of future events could influence how you understood what had already occurred. So there was some kind of backward effect in time due to non-occurrences, and this all seemed really exciting to me. And after a very long struggle in my freshman year, um, I derived neural networks. And I didn't realize that they were neural networks at first. But some of my friends were pre-meds, and they were discussing, um, you know, cells and axons and synapses and transmitters and all this kind of thing. And when I heard about that, I sensed I really already knew it because there were things like that in my first networks. What was the basic structure of the first model? The network. Well, it had, it had formally, what really excited me was that formally it had nodes, like in a graph, and directed pathways. This was a big issue in my mind. It was a big struggle to understand that these pathways were directed because sometimes, like if you practice A, B, you can also learn B, A. But if you practice A, B, C, D, then the backward effect is much weaker. So whether things went backwards and forwards symmetrically or asymmetrically depended on context. Anyway, so there were these things like nodes which were interpreted as populations of cell bodies and then there were directed pathways which were interpreted as axons and then the ends of the pathways, that's where learning had to occur and those were interpreted as synaptic knobs which are just the ends of the directed signal pathways between cells. 
then there was a functional gap that had to be there. And then signals would activate the next cell, and there had to be some kind of feedback from the cell to make sure that the associated relationships, let's say, between A, B, A, B, mm -hmm. you know, is not the same as A, C, A, C. So all this came out of a study of serial verbal learning, and if you think about that, 1958, it was really exciting, especially since there really was no field <coughs> of neural networks that I was aware of. Maybe there were just a few incipient beginnings in some place in the world. AI, artificial intelligence, was just starting.